Hello, welcome to a recap of today's live code hangout. Today we've been working on the Western Friend website. You can find the source code at github.com slash westernfriend and under the westernfriend.org project. I'm working on an, um, an enhancement. We've recently upgraded to Wagtail 6, actually 6.1, and they've introduced some new features called generic listings. And they are essentially a replacement for the previous um, Wagtail model admin class, I think that was the name of it, that's been moved out of core and into a third party module, contributed module, which may or no, may not continue to be maintained or receive the great enhancements that are going into the Wagtail core. So we want to get on board with the Wagtail core way of doing things. Um, we have to, we had to wait a little bit because some of our content uh, is hierarchical. Some of it is um, generic Django views and there just weren't, uh, some of the use cases haven't been covered yet, I'm thinking. Anyway, today I started on kind of a low hanging fruit, just to a very simple use case so I could understand how these, um, these new page listings work. So let's take a quick look at the code. There were two main changes I made today. The first was to define page listing view sets, uh, which look like this. Uh, these are very similar to the Wagtail model admin. They allow you to define menu items that can be nested. We have just a menu item at the top level here. Uh, when you click it, you get this view set, which is just like a table listing all of the, or the attributes from the content that you choose. You can define these columns here. Um, here we can see bulk actions that you can do, the page publication status, the date, which is a dynamic field, and some actions under this little ellipsis here, as well as the page title. Uh, that takes you to the form that's auto-generated by Wagtail based on the page content panels. So none of this really changed. We'll come back to this topics in just a moment, but essentially this is the new um, listing, uh, it's a little bit different than this model admin listing, um, which is the old way of doing things, add tag here. So we're looking only at news items today. It's at news item, you know, the layout's changed. You've got filters up here and um, I'm able to filter on various facets, you could say. Uh, this is all automatically generated by the Wagtail CMS without me having really to write many lines of code, um, which is why we want to stick very close to the core. So let's take a quick look at the code. And there were some uh, things I left open today, um, but essentially a page listing view set come you know straight from the documentation. Uh, I would say the documentation for this is pretty thorough. Uh, it's got some gaps, which hence my Stack Overflow questions. Um, and uh, I did read not only the reference material, but these sort of general guidelines. Uh, a tutorial would have helped. You know, there's four quadrants of the uh, types of documentation you should write. They have the um, reference pretty well done and some generic um, instructions are, are fairly good. Uh, essentially, you, you say what it should look like in the menu, the text, and that it should be added to the menu, and then what um, model you're rendering here. Uh, which ours is it's a page listing view set and so it's going to be a model you define that inherits from the wagtail core page model uh, then you have a hook register admin view set and it essentially returns an instance of your um, your view set so they're doing everything in wagtail hooks.py uh, in our code i did it in views pi and then we also have wagtail hooks over here so i'll just hop over to the github interface maybe it's a little easier to to review the code uh, so, and I've got a to do here, but uh, we've got our, um, and, and a couple of things. Uh, so what we're looking at here is our, let's put that to the side, boom, and this over here, our news item um, view set, it takes the model news item and then the label here, news items. And uh, we just have some generic icon there and it's visible in the menu. And then I've customized the layout here. So I wanted to show the page title. So there's there's custom, there are specific widgets for these um, wagtail to know how to render some of these 
more advanced behaviors like the uh, bulk actions tool, for example, or how to properly render the date format and things like that. So I didn't have to write any lines of code. I just kind of used the uh, the proper class name in our column definitions. So page title column, date column, page status column, and bulk actions column. And when you click a bulk action, when you have one selected, it gives you these little bulk actions down here. Uh, then we instantiated it. So once I've got the like instantiated view set, I can import that, which I did here in the hooks. That's in the facets hooks, sorry. Uh, so our previous code where I was defining the whole menu and uh, model admin, which we're now deprecating, we're getting this model admin out of our project, uh, it reduced down to this. You register the admin view set hook that returns the instance that I've imported over here. Pretty straightforward. Um, the other detail up here is the filter set class, and that's what gives me uh, these, these filters up here. And by default, it um, includes date updated, owner edited by site, and has child pages. Uh, I'm going to ask in another Stack Overflow issue how to disable or how to customize this filter set to remove like the multi-site one, which we're not using. Wagtail comes with multi-site built in, so you can host you know, dozens of sites from a single Wagtail instance using having the same functionality. This is pretty cool. It's probably inspired um, by a WordPress multi-site. But we only have the one site on our, my local host as well as our deployment. So it's kind of redundant. It's confusing to the end user. And then I added a topic filter to define a custom filter. It was pretty straightforward. Uh, I think we're up here. Where are we at? Yeah, I was already, already there. Uh, you just inherit, uh, you build a class inheriting from page, your the page listing view set, filter set class. Um, this is a kind of dynamic way of retrieving that. You define the meta, you tell it what model it is, and then what fields you want to uh, facet or filter. This is a foreign key field and relates to multiple topics. And everything is handled by Wagtail, though, once I've got the models set up. And again, you can check out our code on GitHub so you can see the whole project. This is, I'm just showing the changes today. We've been working on this project for about five years. All right, now let's take one more look at one more feature we did today. And that's the um, topic chooser. Um, Wagtail 6, I think, has this new chooser view set. I don't know when it was introduced, but I've introduced it to the project here. That gives you a nice interface uh, to search and filter, uh, even with locale selection. Um, related content uh, to choose, you know, uh, foreign key related content. Um, it's just a bit of an improvement over the previous um, in line that we were using to select and it's going to be maintained it's you know wagtail core so i wanted to use it one of the features it includes um, is the ability to create and edit the um, items which is the main feature i want to add here the search interface is already really nice i've only got one topic so it's not really going to do much but you know it would, it would narrow it down um, you could have dozens or hundreds um, you know of related options and it'll narrow it down and by uh, i've got the comment code commented out to allow it to create it because in our project these topics are modeled as wagtail pages and wagtail pages are part of a hierarchical content model so every page instance has to have a parent has to be located in, in this tree uh, it's coming from Django Treebeard. However, when I click this button to choose a topic and then I clicked the create uh, topic button here, it would render this form and is asking for a couple of pieces of required uh, data. The path to this in the page tree, the depth in the tree, and the number of children that this has. These are all tree-related metadata. The user never enters these. These are automatically populated when you create an instance and you place it in the wagtail tree. But in order to do that, you have to select a parent. And the thing is, we don't have, we don't select parents for these. We have one parent uh, class uh, called topic index page, and all of our topics are defined out there. It can only have one instance of the topic index page. And anytime we create a topic, uh, it goes under that. So our users don't ever think about that. It's kind of like a filing cabinet in a way. We constrain it. 
based on the subpage type and parent page type constraints that are part of the wagtail page model. And uh, you can say their topics can't have any subtopics, for example, you could do that with an empty list. Um, so yeah, when I when I uncomment these, when I say, you know, uncomment this and exclude form fields, it, it renders this create, it allows this create tab, allowing me to do it, but I need a way to automatically populate that. So I created this um, Stack Overflow question. We'll see if we get a response on that because that would be really convenient. If not in this case, in other cases where we'll be repeating this pattern as we deprecate the Wagtail model admin and move towards these generic views. Now granted, this, these um, generic view sets and chooser view sets, these are, I think, both new in Wagtail 6X and now we're in 6.1. And they have a roadmap of incrementally uh, improving these. And I think they're sharing a common code base. So that this is a new architectural pattern and a new feature in a way that, you know, isn't fully fledged. And that's just kind of the nature of software. So I don't, uh, I mean, I understand this not being, um, maybe supporting um, some of the uh, use cases that, that we've developed in our project. Also, I've got to admit, I don't really understand it well. There are new features, so I'm learning a lot. Maybe there's a simple way to achieve this question and, and another one that I opened today. So there's that. The third facet here is that the documentation, I read the documentation over and over and very thoroughly, didn't quite you know, describe, it didn't allude to this uh, particular use case. And I guess the fourth thing is that since maybe it's not well documented and this is a new release, you know, these large language models, ChatGPT, for example, and uh, other tools like Copilot, they don't have this uh, information in their sort of knowledge graph or their latent knowledge, um, you know, compression model, <laughs> the, the compressed knowledge space. So it wasn't really, it was hallucinating, not really giving me useful answers. You can see all that in the stream, um, which was about just over, uh, just under three hours of working on this and, and writing these Stack Overflow questions. But overall, it was productive, and we made some progress. And I've got this pull request here that I think is just ready to merge, and then I've linked it to our Stack Overflow question, so I can circle back around on this user experience improvement. So this has been another, and I, oh, sorry, yeah, did a little bit of dependency updates in the same pull request since I'm a solo developer, and I just want to keep things up to date as we go. This has been another live code hangout, code with Briley. Been working on the westernfriend.org website, Wagtail CMS. Um, we're also going to be looking at some game development with Godot, an educational game we're working on. So stay tuned for that. And let me know uh, if you've got any kind of projects you're working on or questions or, or ideas you want to build. We can uh, chat about those and maybe do some uh, collaboration on GitHub. Okay, thanks for your time and have a great day.